Hey everyone, I'm Roger Burnley, and welcome to our channel, ADHD at 70. We're going to explain why this channel is here, why we created it, and, uh, and you're going to get a lot of value out of it, you will. Uh, I'm going to start with this, and then we'll bring in AJ so we can talk about why we are here now. In November of 2020, because I want to talk about this in terms of the year so everybody gets it, and in 2020, I turned 70. So everybody, I know when people look at me, they say, no, you don't look that old. Yeah, I am. And so that's what happened. And before that, I started feeling something was a little off. And it probably something that I felt my entire life, but I didn't understand it because now it was showing up. Because what was happening is uh, because of what we've gone through the pandemic and all the things that were happening in the world, I didn't have people working with me. I didn't have a lot of staff that I used to have all my entire life that could take care of things. So I'm sitting here going, what the heck is wrong? Why can't I get stuff done? There's something going on I can't figure out. Then I started to notice that my movement, I'd be sitting down at night and this nervous energy that I always experienced was getting worse. I go, what's happening? And so that's what got me to start to question all of that. And then it took me to another place, but I'm going to talk about it in a bit because it's interesting because this is how AJ Abhishek, <laughs> this is how AJ got here is because of a video that I created that said, I don't even remember what the title was. It was um, ADHD, INFJ, and RSD all make sense from a spiritual perspective. I think that's what the title was. But then you found that. Anyway, I'm going to introduce AJ now. How are you, sir? Hey, hello, everyone. I am Abhishek. I am doing good. So as Roger said that, you know, uh, pretty much similar, but like Roger is at, uh, at an age of 70 plus. I am currently in India and uh, at an age of 27 years old. Similar to him, I also have uh, been facing certain, uh, you know, uh, certain things which made me question how uh, I'm, you know, I'm being uh, worked, out about, worked up about things or not being able to uh, plan tasks or you know, being worried about things which do not really should uh, make one worry so much about. So I had uh, been uh, trying to explore internet about, uh, you know, how, what it could be, what, how someone can uh, be better at time management and all those things. And it always seemed like, you know, such a stupid thing to, uh, to concern anyone. And then, of course, it's like late night browsing when you when you just keep on searching and you watch one video and then another from the recommended video, and and I and I I, I anyway had known from a few years that I uh, my my Facebook personality type was INFJ, uh, so I I tell them, what, across, tell them what that is. Um, m m some people may not even know what that is. This is a test that we. Uh, took. So an INFJ is a particular personality type from the Myers-Briggs um, test. So, okay. Sure. Yes. So uh, it's, it's uh, something entirely, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, there are 16 personality types uh, based on how, uh, whether someone is an introvert or extrovert or what kind of, uh, whether they perceive things or sense things, whether they, whether their decisions are based on perception or judgment. So uh, I have known that I have I am an INFG from uh, past couple of years and and I have uh, taken multiple tests and they, the the results have always been very consistent. Mm -hmm. So I was actually looking for you know more and more information about ADSD and trying to know whether I have ADSD or you know then I came across ADD and you know all the misconceptions some one have. Uh, mm -hmm. So late night you know maybe two or three a.m. I suddenly stumbled across uh, this video of. Uh, Roger, it had uh, it had a few hundred views, but somehow I came across it and I was going through the video and I was like, okay, this video was uploaded very recently, just a few months back. <laughs> and I, I was curious and I was like, okay, I mean, somewhere out there, uh, you know, without even having an intention of, exp you know, uh, getting viewers on that video is posting something which seems so much relevant to me. And yeah. I went down the video and there was a, uh, there was a link for a consulting session. And it was absolutely free. So I was like, why not? Why not you know, just let me just register and talk to this person? <laughs> Maybe I can just at least talk and uh, you know, get you know, some information. 
So I that is how I reached out to Roger. Perfect. And you that was exactly what I wanted to accomplish. Now I'm going to talk about this too, because the reason I wanted to create this channel was the same reason that I did that other video, because I wanted to start to take away some of this judgment at, that we all have about anything that we might think of a mental disability or illness or whatever it is. And I don't ever see them that way. And so I need to take away the stigma. And it's interesting, we just went through a, a mental or going through, I guess, mental awareness month or something like that, but it's the stigma that goes back. So anyway, that video, I've got to find it. I've got to put it back up again because it's it's no longer up. But I watch it now and I could see that I didn't want to do the video. I didn't want to talk about it because it was uncomfortable. But there's another part of me because I'm a coach and I know that I have to talk about these things because I want to help people. So I thought, no, I've got to do the video. I've got to talk about it. And I know there's someone out there that's going to relate to this, that's going to receive some value from it. And there were many people, but then you showed up, <laughs> then AJ shows up. And so then it made me see, okay, we're supposed to do something else because what I said in that first video was from a spiritual perspective. See, because I see everything that way. I think that we are given things in life because we're supposed to work with them to cause evolution evolution within us and also in the world. And so if I have this condition, let me figure it out. We're going to, so on this channel, let's tell you what's going to happen. We're going to talk about a lot of different things because um, AJ has some questions he's going to ask me. And with that, I think I will be able to provide a lot of help. And then also, as I said, um, in the description of the channel, I'm going to give some coaching tips because the coaching tips are the reason the things that I developed over years, that's how the ADHD, I hid from it. That's how I didn't know. And so there's a lot of misconceptions about why, um, there's a lot of misconceptions about diagnosis. And even if this is a real thing, and that is probably the most frustrating thing, to um, aggravating thing to say to someone who knows that they've experienced what the, 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 how this impacts your life. And it's also dangerous when you don't know because you do crazy stuff in your life too. So, yeah. so yeah, let's start with uh, I'm, Yeah, I'm on the other end of the diagnosis. I'm, <laughs> I'm still uh, you know, exploring and coming to know whether I have it. I've taken uh, multiple tests, few of which are recommended by Roger himself. And I've, I've, I've seen well, you know, okay. positive numbers. Now the, test, the test that you took, what, what, what kind of things were they? The, I sent you one assessment. Right. Hmm. And then you've taken others. And what did you what were the results when you took those? The results were uh, surprisingly positive, uh, you know, in terms of uh, diagnosing whether someone has an ADD or ADHD. And I tried my best to not to not have a bias because I already had researched a lot about it. You knew, uh, I tried yeah. my best, but the results were not just above the limit, but they were way above. So I was like, yeah. Right. So, you know, the, what the takeaway that one can take from this channel would be really authentic because, uh, uh, you know, when, when, so, when someone starts uh, finding out that, okay, that there is something called ADHD and I may have it, what they go through initial, uh, initially is a lot of unanswered questions in their mind, which mm -hmm. they cannot get answers very easily for, or maybe they don't, do not even have enough resources uh, or source from where they can get answers. So there's a lot of curiosity. So mm -hmm. in order, you know, so that the, 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 that curiosity is not, uh, you know, doesn't get lost out there and, in, and gets proper answers. Uh, I hope, you know, the audience can get, and not, not just those who think they are uh, going through it, but also their, uh, their colleagues or their, their family, their spouse, their parents can get a perspective of mm -hmm. what it can be, how it can be. Perfect. And there, let's talk about some of the misconceptions. And this is why we're afraid to look at it, because we've grown up think, feeling like this was all some horrible illness that only happened to boys. That's where it really started when people started to understand this, except this, this has been around as long as man, civilization has been around, but we didn't know what it was. And a lot of it couldn't have been studied until recently because we didn't even have the technology to be able to accomplish that. And so for me, 
I, I can see now, as I said, how this hit for me. And I can see now how certain other people like you, I think, would find that it's difficult to believe because wait a minute, you're smart. You've done things, you've achieved things. You couldn't possibly have that. And that, again, makes you really upset. The thing is, everyone has some of the symptoms or things that might be considered to be ADHD. Every single person has that. So that's not, so that's why it's confusing. So you can take a test like that and maybe receive some of the things. Yeah, I do that. I forget things or I'm scattered sometimes, some of the times. However, the biggest difference is when you know that it's going on all of the time and it's impacting your life and that's the problem. And so that's what was happening for me as well for a long, long time. Now, you and the reason I wanted to say this too, the reason I decided to do this channel and make this weird, weird name because I couldn't find anybody else who was talking about this discovery at this age. I couldn't find it online. And so, and it's when you make the discovery, it's shocking sometimes. And it's un, and it, you go through all these different emotions. And so as we go through the chat, as we put up videos, I'm going to talk about that and help people kind of process through that because I went through all of them. You get angry, you get upset, you get depressed, you get, you can go through all sorts of things. And then you start having regrets too, because when you understand it, go, why didn't I know that before? My life could have been so different, you know, but it still could be different right now. So Totally, I totally can understand. You know, uh, there are moments when you think that you have solutions in front of you, which you have found on internet, TED Talks, self-help books, but you feel like there are things which are just beyond your control. Maybe someone will say, just, just try this, just do it. But the, the, mm -hmm. the whole thing of doing certain activity, uh, you know, sometimes it feels like it's out of your control, <laughs> mm -hmm. which makes you feel very helpless, of course. But yeah. did you come to understand what that is? Um, there's something that happens in in the way our brains work, basically. And now I'm not a doctor. I don't know all of this. I've just studied a whole bunch because I, I when I started to figure this out, I said, let me look at some neuroscience and start to understand a few basic things. So I'm not telling anybody what goes on. However, I do know that dopamine and norepinephrine are the things that we need in our brain that cause us to function, that uh, control our executive function. executive function. And so when we're lacking that, we don't want to do anything. It's, and, and we can't understand. And that's the, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the part that's so difficult. You don't, and I think this is what you were saying, you don't understand why you're not able to act on the stuff that you're seeing. Totally, I agree completely. <laughs> so uh, why don't we start with you know uh, you know about about knowing you because if, if the audience has, has a better perspective about who you are who you have been then subsequently mm -hmm. they'll be able to understand better uh, what you have you know gone through throughout your uh, throughout this journey of self exploration and you know uh, struggles little struggles right. so first can you can you uh, can you tell us about uh, you know who you are where you where you've been staying professionally, what you've been doing, because right. you said that you have you've had staff pretty much for a significant amount of time before pandemic, mm -hmm. and then maybe we can go to how the whole uh, you know uh, finding out things being scattered uh, difficult to handle them uh, took you through the journey of uh, ultimately finding out that you do have ADHD. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, and it came down to me finally picking up the phone and calling a friend of mine when I recognized what was going on. Again, I have studied a lot and I've been a coach for a really long time. So I know that when someone is not operating in a way, there's a reason for that. And we can find it, we can find out what it is. I can give them something to do that could probably start to change that. But now I'm sitting here, I'm going, but what about me? Why am I not doing this? And then I started thinking about all the stuff that I created in my life I thought, wow, this is really great. I can't let anybody see it. I can't put it out in the world. I can't do anything. So I started feeling all of those things. Uh, but anyway, let me go back. I started out in this life doing all sorts of things and I was really lost. And I can see now that some of it was a result of this condition 
this particular way I was oriented in the world. I was trying to do things that I was not really suited for doing. And it started very early in my, in, in my life. When I was in school, um, and many people will, will relate to this, I would daydream. That's what, that was the thing that pe my teachers would say. And they would tell my parents, because we used to get what were called report cards back then, it was a long time ago. And they would write on there the things about the kids that they felt the parents needed to look at. And the one thing they said about me was that Roger is distracted all the time. He daydreams, he looks out the window, he's not thinking about things. And so they didn't know what was wrong. So I'm feeling I'm something's wrong. To say I'm thinking something is wrong with me. So then they decided maybe he needs glasses. Maybe he can't see. That's one of the first, one of the things that they'll go through. And so they went to get me glasses. I did not need glasses, and the glasses actually gave me headaches because <laughs> there was no reason for it. And but this kept going on. So all I'm implanting in my brain is that something is wrong with me. You see, so I've lived, I lived my life like that, trying to, well, what's the next thing? What am I going to do next? So then I uh, started to, we have, we don't have a lot of impulse control too. When you have ADHD, you make decisions that you don't completely understand. I did that con constantly throughout my life. I was in college and I, cause I went to college because I thought, oh, maybe I'm supposed to do this. My dad did it and he did accounting. So maybe I'm supposed to figure that out. So I started doing accounting. Didn't care about it, didn't want to do it, but I was good at it. I found that I had this skill that could allow me to do that because I could focus on the numbers. You see, I could get that done and I could stay with that. Anything else I didn't care about. But then I walked out of school one day second year of college, I just said, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> There's something else. I knew that there was, I wasn't being um, attracted to this. I told you a story. I'm going to tell all of them. <laughs> because it, one of the things that started to come up in college and people will start to recognize this within themselves. Part of this condition is about, we talk in it, attention. You know, can you pay attention? Can you stay with something? In college, this was probably one of the reasons I left, um, I had to take this course called Economic ge um, Geography. Economic Geography. And what that was, was studying all the countries of the world and what they grew, what they sold, what their agriculture was. And you had to memorize all of this stuff. Now, so. Number one, that's the most horrible, boring thing ever. I don't care anything about it. And then my instructor was this guy who taught. He was in monotone. He would, I, I kid you not, he would stand there and he would just monotone. You, there was no inflection anywhere. So you, I fell asleep. Everybody did because it was so freaking boring. And so if you have ADHD, you're not going to stay. If it doesn't have interest for you, you can't stay there. Anything that's meaningless, you just can't stay there. And then we'll talk about other stuff too, because that's also an INFJ characteristic. Um, so we will we will get into that a little bit later. So anyway, all of these different things started to show up early in my life. But again, like I said, I was kind of smart. So nobody questioned it beyond that. When I got out of high school and started, no, it wasn't questioned because I graduated, I did things. And so it shouldn't have been a problem, but it was a problem throughout my entire life. And now I can see that, which is why I'm so passionate about giving this information back to others so they will understand it. All of those things, but every job that I had, AJ, after that, um, I got moved into positions of management or I owned my own companies. I did that for years. I was always a had my own company. So again, I would have people doing certain things that would require the kind of focus that I didn't have. And I didn't know that, didn't understand it at all until this past year. So you know, the way that, mm, go ahead. That, that's also one of the things, one of the, one of the recommended uh, careers uh, are uh, for, for someone with ADSD is uh, being an entrepreneur. <laughs> that gives you a lot of right. energy to deal with dynamic things on a daily level. But again, when you start to go deeper, you know, uh, with wider variety of activities, mm -hmm. it, it, independently, then it may get difficult. Right. Well, because we need to do things that will cause us to produce 
um, that dopamine, you know? And so sometimes things that are frightening or scary, we would do because that would perform that task that we are not able to do because of the way that our brains are built. And I like to think of it that way. We're all born into the world with different things. And so we just have to figure out how to work with what we have. That's what we're all supposed to do. And, um, and so for me, I know that when we discover something and figure out some solutions, we got to give it back to the world. And that's what we're doing here. And that's why I became a coach, not knowing before that I was actually coaching so many people with who were also suffering from ADHD and didn't, didn't really know that. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about so much. There's so many different elements of this. And a lot of it is discovery. This is what we are all, we're still discovering. And I'm, other people who will come to this will find that they will start to get information that will, one, I think uh, this is what, and this is what I want the channel to do as well. It, they're going to start to find stuff that's going to cause them to know they're not nuts, that they're not crazy, that they've known that there was something else going on that they couldn't quite pinpoint or figure out. That, that's all that it is. So we want to feel comfortable in our own skin. Totally. And, you know, one thing I would like you to tell the audience would be that, uh, you know, when I uh, found your video and I, uh, uh, I scheduled a meeting on, a, on your calendar uh, for a couple of days from there, mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I was not sure. I was like, okay, I have set up a meeting. I don't know who this person is and <laughs> how it's going to go. But uh, when... when <laughs> time advanced and i was like okay i have this meeting tonight so what happened during the during our first uh, conversations was i was very much lost because i had recently found out what it is how it is how uh, you know neurons work mm -hmm. what are the uh, differences in the in the brain of someone who has an adsd but you you told me i remember that you told me that it is not so it is not a disadvantage. It's just a different way that you are functioning. Right. And if you think of it right. positively, it is an advantage. There are a lot of things which you know you can do in a way that others may not be able to. That us, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know how I tell them how excited I was when I heard from you <laughs> when I when you first contacted. I said, "Oh yes," because <laughs> that's it's my whole intention. I want somebody to understand. And so. And especially someone who's like a little lost and afraid of it. So I'm thrilled. Completely. You were so excited. And just, just like <laughs> smiling now, you would continue saying, oh my God, I have so many things to say. I have so many things to say. But, but look about you. Okay, but no, we got to <laughs> tell them this. This is what you did. You know, you just talked about that. You didn't know who I was, but, and you just set up the appointment. But then you sent me this whole long explanation about, your entire life, right? You sent me that whole thing and I sat there and I read it and I go, I know every, I told you, I knew everything that you had said. I, it made complete sense to me. Totally. I was actually going through uh, some uh, emotional turmoil that day while at the same time being more and more pressured about uh, uh, this thing, whether I have ADSD or not, or you know how, would, how I'm not able to manage certain things in my life. So if just before, uh, just around 20 minutes before our, me our meeting started, and I was like, let me at least give uh, Roger some introduction about myself. Otherwise, most of our time will just, uh, will just spent in knowing each other. So I just, I, and I was, I have a lot of energy at night. It was uh, pretty, I think it was 3.30 a.m. in India when we had a call schedule, first call. So it was really? Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> So it was 3 a.m. at night and I was like, let me tell him at least something. So I started uh, composing an email. I, in a single stretch, I was just, I <laughs> took it all out. I was like, okay, this is, this is who I am. I'm doing this. I came across your video because of this intention. And I don't know what we're going to talk about, but this is my history. And, you know, mm -hmm. just giving you a heads up before we have a call. And I was surprised that in a few, you know, it, I just, because I just sent you the, the email just a couple of minutes before our call started and you had gone through it. And you were like, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so yeah. excited. I can know, I can understand. I was like, I was very much relieved. And let me tell you why. Because I know what it's like for people when they have the question and they're afraid of it because again of what they may have been told. 
They don't want to talk to their parents. They don't want to talk to their significant others or whatever, especially adults. I'm talking about people who discover it at, when they are adults. And so I know what that feels like. And first of all, I'm a coach. I'm a life coach. I'm an intuitive life purpose coach. So I work with people all the time in this. So I know how it feels when you don't understand who you are and what you have and what you could offer someone. So I was fortunate, however, because as I started talking about this, I'm going to tell you my discovery because this will help you and why I get so excited about meeting um, with people in this way. Um, I was talking to my really good friend about this. She's known me for 40 years or something like that, a long time, so she knows me well. And she's told me all along that, I think you need to get checked out. I think there's something <laughs> else going on with you. I'm like, no, that couldn't possibly be. And so when I started noticing these things, especially I think my, my movement was the thing that started to bother me more because it was so, it was becoming worse rather than calming down. And, and I was talking to her about it and she goes, call Stuart. I go, why, why would I do that? <laughs> Stuart is a therapist that I've known for years. We've both known him for many, many, many years. And so I thought, okay, and I put it off. I kept putting it off. And this is what people do. We all do. You were re even hesitant about <laughs> looking at and discovering, you know, that's what I'm talking about. And so I said, okay, I'll call him. So one Sunday I called him, he called me back. And I said, Stuart, this feels really stupid, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Is it possible? Do you think, could I have ADHD? And then he's, and I'm on the phone with him, but I could kind of almost hear him smiling. That's how it felt to me. I could hear him smiling because he said, oh, do you mean that you feel like you're working harder than everyone else and they're just moving ahead and you're wondering why you're not getting anywhere? Do you find that you're just so completely disorganized and you can't put it all together? He just kept going through all of them. And everything that he said just hit so close to home and I just broke out in tears. I just started, I'm sitting on the phone, I just broke out in tears. I'm being completely honest because that's how this feels at times when this awareness comes up. I'm like, what? I mean, there's, it's a mix of emotions that happen when you discover that. And he told me later too, because the reason he knew this, because he just was diagnosed with it when he was uh, 37. So that's what, you know, so when it's later in your life, it's kind of become shocking for different reasons though, for a lot of reasons, because then when you've lived a lot of life, when you're older, you can look back and see all the stuff you didn't know and the reasons you did certain things. And so you can, go through a whole bunch of grief as a result of that and regret in the whole bit until you decide that you're going to accept it and start to use it the way that you can. Because I do believe that people who have this, which we've proven, which we've seen, are really creative. They have a lot of other, so many things to offer. And that's what's going to come out. The first thing I said to you was that, oh, wow, you're so smart. <laughs> I, no, I said, I said that about your, about your, when you first, uh, I said, I don't remember. I said something about this was brilliant. I, I, I you, you, you talked about the email I wrote, you, you wrote, you were like, you know, you write good. Yeah. So, so, you know, you know, it's, it's very interesting how uh, your uh, whole experience, because you had a therapist, which you, you have known, you had known from several years and right. how medical community is pretty much advanced, much more advanced in US compared to India. So your experience was much, much different than what I had uh, around three weeks back when I went to a, <clears throat> a therapist. Uh, uh, and I, I went and started explaining about my anxiety and uh, what kind of uh, issues I think I have. And I started telling him everything again. <laughs> so uh, I mentioned I happened, I did not want to give him a bias. So I did not tell him uh, beforehand, but at the, when, when my slot time slot was going to uh, be over in, a, in, in some 15-20 minutes I told him that you know recently I've come to know about ADHD what do you think what do you feel like do, do we have uh, anything to uh, diagnose it accurately what he told me was if you had ADHD you wouldn't be sitting here uh, having done so much in your life you know uh, 
so basically i i i have done an mba from uh, one of the top four institute in india it's just very recently got ranked fourth in india otherwise it was on fifth so he told me that you, you cannot be so much smart if you had adhd and i wanted to tell him that i have done enough research to know that there are so many successful people so many mm-hmm. uh, singers actors scientists who have had adhd so i i wanted to tell him but i could sense that you know uh, i could sense that which we will definitely talk about later the the difference uh, the the gap in awareness and acceptance and not just in common people but uh, maybe on also with the with the doctors and psychiatrists and you're speaking of exactly the thing that is part of the problem because for you let me just talk, i'm going to talk about i know how you felt because you're looking at someone who was telling you you couldn't have it and you know that you are really smart you know that you have all these gifts but you're wondering why you can't get them out there you're wondering why this isn't happening and this doctor is saying well that doesn't even make sense you couldn't possibly now what that where does that leave you you leave leaves you with wait a minute then i'm just a i'm just a person who's messed up i can't do anything <laughs> that's all you get that's all you're left with instead of understanding no there's a way to work with this and again that's why i talk about this no one my friends and my family even thought this couldn't be possible um because of the same things oh you're smart you've done businesses you've done this that and the other i go yeah but i screwed them all up <laughs> i could i couldn't handle them in those when i back then i didn't understand that's again why i said i propped myself up by putting people around me that can handle the things that I couldn't and but again this this is we're going to help so many people understand what goes through because that one that you went through is so disheartening um I'll I'll tell you another person a good friend and I have to figure out how to always work with people because I know the the energies that are going to be around all of this now this is another person who's in his 30s that i sort of suspected this is what was going on so i gave them an assessment and um and it came out to be that way that yes this is there so again he's going through the shock so now he's got to talk to his mother the parents said that's not possible for now they will go through that for many different reasons one this as i said this science is very new this understanding of this and then it's also been mixed up with all the other ideas that we heard about it in the very beginning so of course this older person is not going to understand this on any certain level they're just not going to have the information or the education then what parents also do is this no it couldn't possibly be because i raised you i must have done something wrong if you have this that can't be and so they're going to put it away they're not going to want to look at it parents don't understand that they they can control certain things but they can't control how their kids come in what they're born with what conditions are there they're just what is you know and so i had to go and find i said okay we're going to bring her into this gently <laughs> and the gently is with education when people start to understand something that they didn't know they're a little more likely to accept it to see that and so that's what we did there and then certain people i um, i'll tell you one other one so um and this is why i said to you aj you're going to help so many people especially starting here and doing what you're you're going to be doing now i have this other lady much much older in germany who we did a diagnosis same thing and she um went to a doctor and all of this was verified and then she started getting treatment and the whole bit she still hasn't told her husband <laughs> do you see because the stigma that we carry we think something's wrong with us and it's something terrible or horrible and it's not that that's why we don't even like to use the name or call it that so i said i'm going i'm going to do something different let me plaster it on the screen let me put the name up there this is what it is because it has value yeah it has value when we understand it as any i want to say this too cuz you know i never i didn't tell you didn't tell you this one either um why talk about your smartness <laughs> how brilliant you are 
uh, because that is another thing that we find in a lot of people have ADHD. There's a whole spectrum, you know, of this. Um, we think of autism, we think of bipolar, we think of all of these different things. They're all in the same um, spectrum, so to speak. So we just got to figure out how do you work with yourself, basically, the best. That's all that it is. I had a client in um, that I've been coaching for a while, and um, he sends me an email one day, and I'm disturbed. I hadn't ta ta seen him in forever. I haven't seen him in months and months and months. And so he tells me this story about him jumping off of a cliff, trying to kill himself. You see, that's what goes on too, trying to kill himself. And I'm thinking something is going on here. Now, I knew that this person was under a doctor's care. And I also knew that this person had discovered quite recently that they had a form of autism and also they were kind of a savant. They had this musical genius that they discovered in their 40s. I mean, and that's kind of shocking in itself. And so you go through all of that and you say, who am I? How, how can this all be happening? And so the doctors that he had been going to, they had been treating him forever for depression and anti-anxiety, all these different things. And they weren't working because it was all, it was the wrong diagnosis. And I said, I think it's this, I think it's the ADHD and all of this is, he started studying, he started getting it and he's like, and he completely changed. This incident that happened where he jumped off the cliff, he didn't die, obviously, but because which was weird that he was safe. However, when that incident caused me to look deeper and figure out, wait a minute, something else is going on here. And that's when I contacted him and gave him this information. And now he's operating completely differently. And he still went to his doctors. His doctors didn't believe it either. No, it couldn't be. Because now they have to change because they've been doing something else, you see. They've been treating him in a completely different way. So they don't want to say we were wrong. They don't want to say we could have missed this. So we have many different things that come up with that. I'm bringing that up because you're, we're, when we get into the INFJ and all the other in the RSD, and we'll do those in other videos, but when we get to that stuff, it's going to make sense for a whole lot of people. Totally, I totally understand. And uh, you know, a lot of it uh, when you know it's when you said that it when you were young, it was difficult to focus on something which you mm -hmm. do not like. You would fall asleep in that uh, mm -hmm. you know economic geography lecture. It's it's totally relatable because because we end up thinking many of us that a uh, lot of things do not interest us, but, but, but the things that we really find interesting, we can hyper-focus because of mm -hmm. which probably uh, those who, uh, who find out their uh, true passions or interests, they become genius at those. They, right. become, they become very, exactly. very much constructive and productive at those. The first thing that I did, and we'll, we'll talk about these because uh, I needed to find some comfort with this you know, for myself, and then I started researching um, famous people who had ADHD, who have talked about it openly. And you can find them. They're out there. There's many of them. And they're creative people, people, all, all sorts of things. And so I get, okay, we're, we're just here it's each to do something different. That's all. And we do it in different ways. And we have different skills. And that's what we're figuring out. You see, what I did as a what I do as a coach is um, help people figure out their right place. I do. I had no idea that I was developing that, but figuring out their right place in the world, because I know that it exists when we figure out how we can operate at our best. That's all that it is. And ADHD is just another one of those things that we use to figure out to operate at our best. You had, give me something, you had some other cool questions too. Let's, let's, let's go into some of those. Yeah, so one of the questions I uh, wanted to ask you, uh, wanted you to speak more about is that, uh, of course, in, you know, you've done a lot of research, you know, a lot of, a lot about ADHD than, uh, you know, someone else would. So, uh, you know, that it is something which is uh, hereditary or genetic, which one is born yeah. with, and usually one of the parents uh, have it. So, you know, you told okay. me that uh, you, you came to realize that your mom had it. So yes. you, know, you can tell me more about 
how how you felt when the moment you uh, you could relate that okay my my maybe my mother uh, it and how what kind of feelings you developed like you feel oh, uh, you this know, is, <laughs> okay there's so many aspects of this thank you for that one um okay when i started doing study because this is what i do i got obsessed i'm watching like documentaries i'm reading i'm studying all kinds of stuff on on neuroscience and then and, and just basically brain chemistry and all of that and when I discovered that this condition is hereditary mainly, I mean, they find a lot of it. It's not 100% because it's also been discovered that you can develop it other ways um, throughout your life. But the greater majority of we can find a genetic link, it's hereditary. So when I started thinking about that, I go, oh, no, my mother. And I felt horrible. Now I'm saying this because some people are still living with those or with those who have ADHD that they don't know about. And so what happens is you judge them because you don't understand where they're operating the way they do. And I did this with my mother forever. My mother died 11 years ago. Okay, she's been gone for a while. And I, when this came up, I said, oh, please come back so I can apologize. <laughs> you see, I want, because that's what it was. The judgment, I didn't understand. And so many people, the people around me did not understand why I was operating in certain ways or couldn't get stuff done. They did not understand. So a lot of people now will get this and see that some of the people that they've been dealing with have been, and that's another thing too, we'll get to that because with you, we were talking about relationships because that's what happens when you're in a relationship, a personal relationship, and the other person doesn't understand how, why you're that way this is why you're getting divorced this is why things are breakups are happening and all of that so totally i understand and you know it's it is very difficult for someone who doesn't uh, who doesn't who is not aware of what adhd is to really grasp uh, how the how the person with adhd is functioning for you it's right. unfortunate that your your mother is your mom is not here today otherwise she would have you know really enjoyed this conversation with you yeah. well she's listening very, i know she's there <laughs> for me it's very different you know if, if my if my dad uh, comes on youtube and find finds out me, me speaking all this i'm not sure how he'll react but i could i could instantly the moment i you know in, in while while i was going through uh, searching through internet watching videos reading uh, researches when I uh, when I uh, read that okay a lot of times a lot of times it is hereditary. I instinctively I could think of my dad because I have seen him uh, you know in, in a lot of in a lot of position where when I felt that it's very much similar to what I have felt. You know in, in a lot of ways when you when you are so much worked up with the tasks which other may think that okay it's not something you can easily you, you can easily prioritize delegate, but you know, they don't understand that those are part, parts of executive functions, which is difficult for an ADSD person. And if no one around understands them, and even if they are not aware, they, they just, they, just they, they don't know what's going on. It, it go, keeps going on and on. So, you know, you could not uh, directly tell your mother, but I'm hoping that right. maybe one, I'll have that conversation with my dad. You will, is, there would, could be nothing better than for your father to discover accidentally to discover this video and to see you talking about it because actually what would happen it would help him it would help him probably even more than you sitting down and having a conversation with them because it it's different when you when you start to tell someone that maybe this is what you have or and all that the, there's pushback when they discover it in accidental ways it becomes easier let me okay let's go back to there's something else that i forgot about actually AJ <laughs> when you asked me about discovering what came about one like, of the perks of having ADHD yes exactly <laughs> so yeah, that's what so what happened was okay I have uh I have Facebook groups and all that and I and uh you know from my coaching business and so in one of the groups I somebody someone paste posted made a post there and it said um you, you're meeting your 18 year old self. You have, wait a minute, how she say? You're, you're meeting your 18, 18 year old self. What, what question would you ask? Or what, what, what advice would you, would you give 
that person at your 18 year old self. And I went in and I said, you are strong. I made some comment and everybody else came into the group and started making all of these comments. And then, um, and because it's my group, I seeing the notices come in, I saw all oh, there are more coming in. So I went back and I looked and there were really great things in there. And then I went back and I looked at the original post, which I didn't see the first time. And it said, she said, what would you say to your 18 year old self? It said, find Roger Burnley. <laughs> I didn't see that. Didn't make any sense to me. I, I didn't see it. I couldn't see it. I said, oh, okay. And I went back in and I laughed. I made a comment about that and I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone came in, a um, friend, someone that I had known for more than 20 years. And she made a comment. She says, you have ADHD. <laughs> and, I and I laughed. I thought, oh, you're making a joke. <laughs> but it didn't leave me, you see. I was still there. And then I thought, why did she say that? What? And, and I don't get it. And so that's when I started looking. And then, that, but, but then it didn't all come about because it took time. I didn't, I looked at a little bit, did a little bit more of, oh, wow, until we got to that point, as I told you, where I'm saying, okay, something's really going on here. I'm shaking too much. Let me talk to someone. That's, that's okay. what it came about. <clears throat> and actually, in a very interestingly, you brought this up as this is one of the things which I've been wanting to ask you. Uh, because like you said, that when you are older, like you described at 70, there was a lot of life to look back at maybe if you are diagnosed mm -hmm. at 15 then maybe you you have more a lot of life to look forward to and think how things will be when i'm in my 20s and 30s and 40s so i this this is one thing i wanted to ask you that now that you are at at your 70 and because mm -hmm. i am at uh, at my 27 i want to ask you what if you could go back in time and talk to your 27 year old self what he was going through uh, you know, because of ADSD, without without it, without even knowing, struggling with things, what would you uh, tell that person to you know make that person uh, you know anything? <laughs> Perfect. That was a really great question because I I came up with this years ago and didn't even know it because of course I you know I only discovered this recently. But what I would tell them is this because it's the title of my next book, which is "You Are Not Crazy and Your Life Makes Sense: How to Find Your Life Purpose." That's what I'm saying. You are not crazy and your life makes sense because when we live with this and don't know it, we feel a little crazy. We feel a little off. Something is not right. And that's never the case. And so that was I now when I created that title again, I had no idea <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> I thought I was just talking about my other the totality of my coaching business, you know, and everything that I do, but it's more than that. And also I said to you, the reason I'm doing this is because I know how it feels when you start, when you discover what's been going on and you start to take care of it and you start to treat it or do whatever. I know how good that feels. I know how horrible it is to live your entire life not knowing and having disasters happening all around you and not understanding why they're occurring. And so I thought, I'm not going to, my legacy is going to be to leave enough information that people will not have to go through that. And then I also said, because of your age, I want you here because you're going to take this over after I'm gone. That's the, that's exactly <laughs> how I look at it. Cause you're going to learn, you already have know so much and you've learned so much so quickly that you're going to just carry this on and then we will all evolve. That's that's really nice of you. I, I even remember, you know, in the in the first meeting, you said that it is your purpose which is being realized through me, and I mm -hmm. felt really touched that you know, <clears throat> you really want to help anyone and everyone out there who mm -hmm. who who can get benefit from you know watching your videos and hearing about your story, not not just someone who is you know not only those who are young but also those who are old, especially uh, someone, I, as, yes. The older ones, I really want to speak to as well, because if they don't know um, and they've lived with this, they've, they've, they've tortured themselves for a great portion of their lives. And so it becomes even more impactful um, for them. Totally. I think you should talk to my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I talk, he's going to find this video. And so forth. He's going he's gonna to find some of them. We're going to keep going. So, yeah, this is good. <laughs>